In this video, we're going to calculate the derivative of sine of x. We'll begin by using our limit definition. The derivative of sine of x is just the limit as h goes to 0 of sine, plugging in x plus h, minus sine, plug in just x, all over h. Now at this point you might seem kind of stuck, like what can we do now? How can we possibly evaluate this? But notice it's sine of something plus something. This is suggestive of using our additive formula for sine. When you have sine of alpha plus beta, we call that just comes out to be sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of beta. So in our case, we can rewrite sine of x plus h using this formula as sine of x times cosine of h plus cosine of x times sine of h. And then we still have minus the sine of x and all over h. Rearranging some terms, we see we have the limit as h goes to 0 of, here we have a sine of x and this one also has a sine of x term, so we can think of putting those next to each other and pulling out that sine of x. So you pull out the sine of x, you're left with cosine of h minus 1. Cosine of h minus 1 divided by our h, and then we still have this term. We still have a cosine of x times sine of h. So let me pull out just the cosine of x, and I'm left with sine of h over h. Now, now you maybe think we just made a bigger mess, right? We, we have sine of x times this messy piece plus cosine of x times this messy piece. And, and if you try to let h run to 0 right now, you're going to get into trouble. Because as h goes to 0, cosine of h goes to 1. Cosine of 0 is, is 1. It's a continuous function. So this is going to go to 1. So you get 1 minus 1 divided by h going to 0. This is going to go to 0 divided by 0. In a similar way, sine of h is going to 0 as h is going to 0. So you end up with 0 over 0. So both of these pieces seem to be getting us into trouble. What we want to do is we want to think about these two terms a little bit and see can we, can we do any kind of algebraic trick to avoid getting 0 over 0. So let's first think about cosine of h minus 1 all over h. Notice that's the same thing as cosine of 0 plus h, right, that's just h, 0 plus h, minus 1. What is 1? Well, 1 is what cosine is at 0 on your unit circle. At 0, your cosine is 1. So that's minus cosine of 0 all over h. And we're looking at the limit as h goes to 0. But what is this limit as h goes to 0? Well, this is just the definition of the derivative of your cosine of x at the point x equals 0. That's just going to give you this limit. In a similar way, this function we can think of as sine of h is just sine of 0 plus h minus, well this minus nothing, minus 0, but that's the same thing as minus sine of 0, because sine of 0 is 0 all over h. So these are the same function, I just rewrote it. This is a limit as h goes to 0. But what is this? This is secretly just the derivative of your sine of x as your x is 0, when your x is 0. That will give you this limit. It seems like in order for us to calculate the derivative of sine, well, we need to know both the derivative of cosine and sine. But notice we only need to know the derivative of sine and cosine at a particular point. 
at this point x equals 0. And we can do that because the derivative at a point is just the slope of the tangent line. For this first example, if you think about the graph cosine of x, you know at 0 it is 1, it's periodic, it looks something like this. But, but at 0, what does the tangent line look like? Well, the tangent line right here, it's, it's the top of, of this mound. The tangent line right there is just going to be a horizontal line. So at x equals 0, the slope of my tangent line will just be 0. This derivative will just come out to equal 0. In a similar way, if I look at sine, I can think, well, the derivative of sine at x equals 0 is just the slope of my tangent line there. What does sine look like at x equals 0? Well, at 0, I'm at 0. My sine graph looks, looks something like this, something like this. And if I was to zoom in to be close to x equals 0, zoom in on the sine graph, and you'll notice as you zoom closer and closer, it looks just like the line y equals x. Close to 0, it looks like the line y equals x. The slope of the tangent line there is just the, the line y equals x. That the slope will be slope 1. So this value will come out to be 1. So as we take the limit, this limit will go to 0, and this limit will go to 1. Hence, we're left with the derivative of sine of x is sine of x times 0, which is 0, plus cosine of x times 1. It comes out to just be cosine of x. The derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. You should, you should look at the graphs and convince yourself that this is true. That, that when, when you start off, you, you have a slope of 1, and sure enough, on the cosine graph, you're at 1. But as you move along the sine graph, you come to a slope of 0. And sure enough, this comes down to a slope of 0. And then you start getting some, some negative slope going down. You get some negative values. And, and exactly, you, you could trace your finger along the 1 and convince yourself that the slope is changing, but it's changing in a way that's described by the points on the other graph.